Colorado suffers an embarrassing loss where they were up 29 nothing at halftime and lost the game to Stanford. We got to talk about it. What happened? What went wrong? The meltdown and everything in between. And what's it going to look like moving forward after the bumper? Stay tuned. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. This is the Vic Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lightsey Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Like, share, subscribe, and notification bell because we upload all the time. Now, Colorado, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and the Colorado Buffaloes were up 29 to nothing at halftime against Stanford on Friday night. And all they did was blow that 29 to nothing lead to lose 46 to 43 in double overtime. The double overtime finished with Shadour Sanders throwing an interception in the end zone and Stanford getting a field goal to win this game in one of the most remarkable comebacks probably in their school history. Like, I mean, I'm going to just be honest. When you done 29 nothing. you don't plan on winning. The problem, why did Colorado give up a 29 nothing lead? It's because they can't run the ball. Their defense is still putrid. It's not very good. One guy, Mr. I, I can't even think of his name. How do you say it? His name is... Alec Aylmaner, Mr. Alec Aylmaner had 13 catches for 294 yards and three touchdowns, including a 97-yard uh, slant route that went for a touchdown after Omari and Cooper just fell. That can't happen. And then after that 97-yarder, a lot of his big plays were on Travis Hunter. But to Travis's credit, Travis got busy on offense. Travis was the go-to wide receiver on offense with 13 catches, two touchdowns, and 140 yards. Just the only problem with that, you're playing all those snaps and you're getting those touches, 13 catches for 140 and two touchdowns, an amazing game on offense. But then you have to turn around and guard this receiver for Stanford, who was just having a career night. He goes for 294. So that goes into... And this was, I think this was Travis's first game back after missing, what, the last four weeks due to an injury? This first game back, he gives you everything he's got on both sides of the ball. Just the only thing is he's giving you a ton of production on offense. And he's kind of hindering you a bit on defense because this one wide receiver is going crazy. Now, here's the problem, though. We know the Colorado defense is putrid. It's been bad all year. Like, they've given up 40 points in a number of games this year. They've had to go to overtime with bad teams like Colorado State and now a bad Stanford team. This is part of the deal. The only problem is the schedule doesn't get any easier. Like, the schedule doesn't get any easier. And even if because they can't run the ball, even if they get up big on teams, it's going to be hard to maintain a lead without running the ball because what running the ball does is keep the clock going. It keeps you from having to throw the ball 50 times, and the more times that you throw it, as great of a player Shadour Sanders is, the more chances you give yourself for making a mistake. When, you're ha when you have big leads and incompletion stop, the, incompletion stop the clock, Going out of bounds stops the clock, and you can't run the ball at all. They, look at look at these rushing totals for Colorado. In a game that they were up by 29 points, this is what they were able to do or not able to do against a Stanford team that had one win coming into this game. Look at these, but they're not even trying to run. The 13 carries by Shadour, most of those you know, coming from sacks and different stuff. I mean, Dylan Edwards gets seven carries. Anthony Hankerson gets eight carries. You, you do a reverse play with Xavier Weaver that gets him in the end zone. Alton McCaskill. They just can't run it. And I get it. When you're only averaging 3.8, 3.1 yards per carry, you got to find a way to run it when you're up that much. Now, when your quarterback's lighting it up like this, I get it. You want to continue to put the ball in his hands because he's this good. 13 for 48, 400 yards, and five touchdowns. It's an amazing game. Xavier Weaver had a couple of scores. Travis had a couple of scores. But when you're up 29 nothing, and when you're dominating, specifically on one side of the ball, and another guy's killing you on the other side, got to find a way to shorten the game. You got to find a way to make it to where you don't allow any type of life to a team like Stanford who isn't very good. 
I mean, look at this. Ashton Daniels came in and lit it up. 396. One young man had 294. They couldn't guard him. Anybody they put out on him, Martin Cooper's falling on the ground. Travis is getting torched. This, this is a bad loss. This is a really bad loss for Coach Prime in Colorado. And as much uh, as love and the attention that they were getting, he even said it. People were waiting for this to happen. They didn't believe that Colorado was as good as the numbers were showing as far as how many people were tuning into their games and the wins that were being racked up. Well, now losing a game like that, you struggled against Arizona State. That was the first indication that, mm, I don't know, this ain't looking too good. You, know, you, you, you got blown out by Oregon, and then you came and made it really competitive at the end with U USC. Now, USC has proven that they just can't stop anybody. But then you struggle with Arizona State and you lose to Stanford. Now you're going to you're staring down the rest of the season that has some really, really tough games left. Like you're staring down the rest of the season where you could go on a losing streak. You get a bye. It's a perfect time for a bye. I know Prime said, uh, you know, you want to he wish he could play next week. No, you guys need a bye. You guys need to get guys like Travis healthy. You need to get a better scheme on defense. Find the proper personnel, whoever that may be, on the roster for that defense. You need this buy. This buy is coming at a, at a perfect time. But after the buy, you get number 25 UCLA. You follow that up with number 12 Oregon State. You follow that up with an Arizona team who has played really, really well in recent weeks. That should be a win, but it is going to be a tough game. A Washington State team that was previously ranked just fell out the rankings. And you end the season with a team like Utah, who is one of the best teams in the Pac-12. This, this is, if you want to be able to continue to have the season be as great as it started off as, you're going to have to tighten up. And specifically on the defensive side of the ball. It didn't help that Juwan Mitchell didn't play for whatever reason. That clearly was a big a big loss to not have Mitchell out there in this game in a game that you should have won even without him. But it's clear that his impact was felt because you gave up 46 freaking points to Stanford 294 to one wide receiver. That that's tough, man. That that just can't happen in prime. And that often is Sean Lewis on the offensive side. The defensive coordinator, those guys are going to have to come up with some game because you can't change a roster We're halfway through the season. You're going to have to get some guys in there. You're going to have to rely more heavily on some of your freshmen. What what happened to Amarian, uh, uh, to Amarian Miller? What happened to Amarian Miller? He was the star of the USC game, and it's just like for the last two weeks, it's almost like he's disappeared completely. I mean, this game, What did he Did he log any stats? No. Marion Miller didn't log any stats, any numbers. That's, that's tough, man. It is going to be interesting to see how they recover from this because these that, that's the type of loss that can't derail your season. To lose a game like that where you're up 29 to nothing, it could make you, meaning you can learn from that, be like that's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me in the game of football. I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to turn all the way up. Or it could really... Loss and you lose. Coach Prime is going to have to do his best coaching job that he's ever done since he's been a head coach after that. Uh, it's good that they get a bye week. It's good that you get a bye week. You can rest. You can get healthy. You can get things back in order because there's kind of a gauntlet that you have the rest of the season with teams with four teams that have been ranked before. And, and the losses, that loss to Stanford, just it's not good, man. You're already at three losses. Now you're now you're fighting for bowl eligibility. Now you're trying to make sure you can get to those six wins. And with that loss to Stanford, getting to six wins could be tough. I mean, it just could. You get UCLA, that's going to be tough. Number 12, Oregon State, that's going to be really tough. You got Arizona, I think you should win that. But then Washington and Utah, to, to find two wins in the rest of the schedule it could be tough after losing that Stanford game. 
I said before the season, I thought you'd go six and six. I'm going to stick by it, but where are you going to get that sixth win? It is going to take a lot from the Colorado Buffaloes to be able to find those six wins. Uh, this is going to tell us a lot about Coach Prime and his team and how he's able to keep that locker room together, how he's able to keep that team together after such an embarrassing type of loss of being up 29 points and losing that game. But if anybody can do it, I think them with Shador Sanders and now a tr healthy Travis Hunter will be able to make it happen. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Do you think Travis should play less snaps? I saw that was a tweet that was put out there by a former NFL player that said, you know, that's what happens when you play all those snaps. You tend to get tired. And sometimes a guy is more susceptible to going off on you when you're tired. And that's what happened with Travis on Saturday because he was dominating on offense but was getting, getting work on defense. That happens sometimes. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Colorado blows a 29 to nothing lead to lose 46 to 43 against Stanford. Will they be able to become bowl eligible? Do you see six wins, two more wins left on this season with the rest of that schedule? My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. This is the Victor Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lightsey Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at jlightsey7. That is on Instagram and Twitter at jlightsey7. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.